low heart rate training and hills. They seem like a bit of a mismatch, don't they? But what if I told you that with the right approach, hills can actually help you boost the results of your zone two running without spiking your heart rate. For so many runners, just like you and me, this will sound really familiar. You're running along comfortably, focusing on keeping your heart rate in your aerobic base building training zone, so zone two, then suddenly you're faced with a hill. As the path begins to rise, so does your heart rate, even though you've slowed the pace right down. But to be honest, it's not even about the hill. It's about the fact that once your heart rate has spiked like that on a run, you end up spending the rest of your run wrestling with getting it back down into zone two and keeping it there. So the big question is, how do we take on these hilly running routes without sacrificing our low heart rate training? What's the game plan to give you the upper hand? Honestly, if you've been faced with this problem, you've probably already tried a few things to help manage your heart rate on those uphill segments, haven't you? Maybe you've adjusted your pace, focused on breathing, or even transitioned to a power walker for a minute or two here and there. But if you're still here watching this, I'm guessing something's still missing. So, what's the secret sauce to making low heart rate training and hills blend seamlessly? Stick around, because I've been down this road, or shall I say up this hill, and I've been using some of the strategies you might never have thought of. First up, let's talk about heart rate training and the heart itself. The bottom line is that your heart rate is reactive to the workload and demand placed on your body. It doesn't know whether you're running, cycling, walking or swimming, let alone the pace that you're running at. It just knows how hard it needs to keep working to keep up with the oxygen demand from your exercising muscles. So if the goal for a given midweek run you're doing, for example, is to keep your heart rate in zone two for one hour, then that's all that really matters. For lots of us runners, our ego says that walking is failure and that you should keep running at all costs until the end of your run. But in reality, low heart rate training only really works if you properly commit to the process. And that means doing whatever it takes to keep your heart rate in the right training zone. So if you need to walk uphill to do so, walk, power walk, and see how high in zone two you can keep your heart rate in doing so. But never feel any guilt for walking if it makes for a more successful run of the, in the bigger picture. In fact, swallowing your ego and walking to keep control of your heart rate means that you won't spike your heart rate and then have to spend the rest of the run getting it back under control. While walking is the obvious first thing we need to address, there are a few other tactics you can use to really keep your heart rate under control whilst continuing to run uphill. These ones are ideal for those hills which are borderline runnable without spiking your heart rate, and they make all the difference. The first is to have you think about the mechanics of your breathing. I know, you've probably heard it before, there's a catch. Whether you're comfortable with nasal breathing, which is a topic for another day, or you prefer to breathe through your nose and mouth together, I want you to focus on diaphragmatic breathing. This essentially means taking full breaths that feel like they're going down into your belly rather than keeping the breath up in the top of your chest. You'll need to slow your breathing rate down a little to do this, so try breathing in for three strides and out for three strides. And while we're talking about your strides, I also want you to be aware of your running cadence, the number of steps you take per minute. Chances are that you're already familiar with the concept of running cadence. If not, I'll leave a great explainer video linked down in the description. That will bring you up to speed. A useful analogy to help you appreciate the importance of your running cadence is to think about cadence and stride length in the same way that you think about gear selection on a bike. As you cycle uphill, most of us select a gear that allows our legs to keep turning over at a relatively quick and easy cadence whilst taking the load off the pedals. Spinning your legs uphill in an easy gear is much easier than grinding your way uphill with slow, heavy, leg-destroying pedal strokes. Get the right gear, and you can crest the hill, still pedaling comfortably, get it wrong, and you're done for. The same applies to running uphill. Think about making short, quick strides, staying light underfoot, rather than plodding your way uphill. That doesn't mean running faster uphill. In fact, quite the opposite. I'm talking about slowing down and spinning your legs uphill in that kind of easy gear. But there is a situation where I want you to let loose and run uphill working through the gears, feeling the speed, even though you're still committed to low heart rate training. Let me explain. Okay, here's the twist that might just change the way you look at those challenging uphill segments. Combining neuromuscular training with the aerobic base building that you've been working on. This is a fantastic way to make the most of sections where you find yourself walking uphill. It needs to be used sparingly, 
but it's an incredibly powerful way to maintain speed and strengthen your legs despite all the long, slow running you've been doing. During those uphill walking segments where you're working to keep your heart rate down in zone two, add a handful of short five to 10 second bursts of faster running into the mix. Quickly ramping up from walking to running at faster than your 5K race pace, but uphill. Sounds interesting? Let's break down how and why these work. Number one, no heart rate spike. These bursts won't be long enough to send your heart rate through the roof, especially if you're maintaining plenty of walking rest in between them. Number two, they recruit the big guns. We're talking glutes and hamstrings here. These brief bursts of speed engage those powerful posterior chain muscles and remind the body how to turn those legs over quickly, allowing you to run faster with better form when the time comes. Number three, neuromuscular training. This strategy of combining training the muscles and the nervous system perfectly complements all the long, slow miles that come with low heart rate training. Just like more traditional strides, they help you prevent those long, slow runs from making you a one-paced runner. Number four, they're fun and productive. Who said that uphill walks had to be a grind? With all the short bursts, you'll feel more engaged, more powerful, and maybe even have a little bit of fun along the way. So next time you find yourself facing a steep incline, don't just trudge up it, fretting the fact you have to walk, transform it into a power training session. Your heart rate will stay under control, your form will improve, and you might just discover that uphill walks aren't just about getting to the top, they're an opportunity to grow stronger and faster, all without burning all your proverbial matches. Get this right, and it'll help you fight back against the biggest problem that runners like you and I have to overcome when it comes to low heart rate training, which I break down in full in this video shown on screen right now. Go and give that a watch next to make sure that you get the most from all your zone two running. I'll see you right over there.